Welcome back to Woodcrafter's Corner. I am coming at you live from my kitchen table and in today's video we are going to be whittling a very easy, simple beginner's project and this is it right here. It's a little golden retriever. Now this is one that is super easy for beginners to do. It'll only take you a few minutes or more and after today you're going to know how to make your own. It's a perfect beginner's project. So let's just get right to it, shall we? All right, so here we go. The first thing you're going to need is a blank that's been cut out on an outline just like this. Now it's important to note that I got this outline, this pattern from a book. It's called Whittling in Your Free Time. It's by Tom Hines. You can find that on Amazon or at your library or wherever. I'll leave a link for it in the description, but it's pretty nice. It's got a lot of cutouts just like this. Very simple, uh, very straightforward. So as you can see, I didn't get too close. I used a coping saw for this, but um, left a lot of the roughing out that uh, I need to do for right now. Now, of course, if you want to know how to use a coping saw or whatever type of method you want, including some uh, gouges, be sure to watch the video I'll link to, which covers how to cut out your blanks. So let's get right to it. I'm pretty much going to time lapse this because I've done videos on this before, or at least a video. And as far as roughing out goes, it's nothing too special. You just need to cut out the places where you don't want wood. I think that's a great description. And so basically, we're just going to go around the outline. So let's get right to it. All right, so I broke this one, and this I'm leaving in because it's a great example of what not to do. Um, even though I was lulled into a false sense of security because this part was still pretty thick, had a lot of wood on it left, I pushed too hard, and uh, if the blade gets in there, as you can see, even way back here, if it gets a chance to slide through, it's gonna do it. So just make sure when you're working with the grain to avoid stuff like that. So I've taken the liberty of going back to square one, this time I used a coping saw for most of it. Uh, again, you can watch a video I made on how to cut that out, but I've left a little bit here so at least we can get an idea of how to proceed. So once you've made your cutout, which obviously I had started to do on this poor beheaded dog, then you're ready to go. So this is the next step. We'll clean up these lines a little bit here, but for now I will start by fleshing out the tail a little bit. So obviously the tail on the dog is not one continuous line from the body, so we need to fix that on this little fella. So to do that, all I'm going to do is make a kind of a diagonal mark where the haunch would be, if you will. And I'm going to push in very slowly, rocking back and forth. If you push it with a lot of pressure here and don't support with the back finger, by the way, then you probably will end up with the same tailless dog this time. Not quite as damaging. But uh, anyways, what we're doing is separating this. So we need to, again, work very carefully, but it's fine because we made that stop. It should just break off now. There we go. We're gonna do that a few times. So now that we've got this all cut out, what we wanna do is go down the middle here and just make a line. And this is gonna give us an idea of where the midline is for the whole body because as we work in from the sides, cleaning things up a little bit, we just don't want to take off more on one side than the other, make it symmetrical. And this line does not have to be perfect in any, any way. It's just a guideline anyway. But that gives us an idea now, for example, on the tail, I've taken off this much. Now I need to take off that much on the other side. So we'll just come over here, do the same thing. Make a gentle, gentle cut. I'm barely pushing, just rocking back and forth. This is where it's good to have a sharp knife. And then cut in, making sure to meet that stop cut, if possible. But taking it slow, because the slower it goes, the more control you have. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. That's what I always say. I literally always say that. Okay. Let's make this a little bit deeper. Yeah, I've lost a lot of uh, animal body parts, unfortunately, um, in my carvings. And, you know, when I get on video, I just get so excited to show everybody and have them whittle along with me that I just get a little carried away sometimes. So it's a good reminder, take things slow. And of course I could glue the head back on and I will probably, but I had so 
much to do still on the head that uh, glue probably wouldn't have been strong enough to support the whittling I still had to do. Maybe, but I just figured it'd be easier, especially for this. So now that I'm done justifying myself, let's just get back to this, shall we? So this gives us a good uh, separation on the tail. So let's move on. The next step will be to draw some ears. So obviously we have the top of the head here and just so it shows up a little better, I'm gonna make this a little darker. We still have this to cut out a little bit, but uh, let's draw some ears. Doesn't have to be anything special. So there's one and we'll just do the same thing here. Draw that line to keep us straight. Wow, I'm good. All right, now what we wanna do, I'm gonna take off a little bit here just because this is where the midline is helpful because as you can see, it's more on this side now, but we'll fix that later. So to cut out the ears, what we wanna do is outline them basically with the knife. So I'm pushing down on the outline that I made. Again, just rocking back and forth slowly, but with pressure, just not a lot of it. Same thing here, be very careful. And we're working with the grain, so it's on less likely, I should say, that uh, we'll end up cutting through anything, but then do the same thing here. And then from both angles, since the knife doesn't cut straight, let's just do the same thing here. If the ears aren't exactly the same, it's fine because we'll come back in later and we can always fix that. That's the beauty of whittling. Unless you take off an entire head, you can fix just about anything. And I can tell that this is uneven because I'm already having to make more, but we can take off more later. All right, so that's that. Now, the tricky part is to start, let's make sure this is deep enough, taking off some of the head. So we want, obviously, the head to be a lot narrower than this. So now that we've made those cuts, we can just come here. Now, again, we're working with the grain. So it's important that we be careful to take off only a little at a time. Otherwise, we risk well, taking off too much. All right, so now we've started this. Let's also start to separate the head a little bit. So kind of where you think the bottom of the head would be. And for me, I feel like that's normally kind of right at this notch here, back to the ear. Let's go with the ear down to here, cut in, and then let's go with the muzzle a little bit right to here. So we're separating the head out and this will give us a good stop cut to do that. Just like that. And the ears were already there and ready to separate. So that's the start. Let's do the same thing over here. I'm going to make this angle here a little bit narrower. And now this clearly is a bit of a steeper angle. So let's maybe just fix that real fast. Be very careful here. <laughs> All right, so be careful not to go too deep there. It's pretty easy. Now let's just keep whittling this head out a little bit. And you can try different angles. Just, you can see how I have my thumb supporting the blade here, as well as my finger. That way I'm not pushing with just one hand where it can get out of control. And I do the same thing here, pushing off with my thumb. So that just allows us to be super controlled with every move we make. And that's important up here at the head where any mistakes would be pretty obvious. So don't be afraid to make the muzzle narrow because that's what we want. And we can use that midline to make sure we're taking off the same amount on both sides. As you can see. Look at that little fella. Now one thing I do know is that I want to take off a little bit here to signify kind of where his muzzle starts and his head begins. So I'll make that mark real fast. And then this part is crucial that you don't push too hard because this isn't terribly well supported. Line up your knife with the way you want it, put it on there, and then just start to rock. 
That's what I do anyway. And I'll push a little bit of pressure with my thumb, support the other end with my finger, other side. Just pushing, pushing. Okay, so that's a good start. It's better to start small. Now, as you can see here, I'm not coming in like this. You can do that and, and meet up with the stop cut that you made here, but I just use the very end of the knife. Less surface area, more control. And look at that, it's already taken shape. But obviously we have a lot more to do on that, so let's just keep going. Again, using my thumb and finger here to support. And you'll find what is comfortable for you if you haven't carved a lot or, or done any whittling or too much of it, I should say, then whatever's comfortable for you, if you're right-handed, left-handed, whatever gives you the most control. I know, with, you know, sometimes people hold things differently, and that's all right. So we're starting to get there. Let's go just a tad bit deeper here, and I'm gonna go, this is obviously coming in at an angle like this. Whoops, can't really see that. Like this, I want it to go more at an angle downwards, straight downwards. So I can adjust that just a little bit here. Careful, careful, very careful here. And then we'll do the same thing here. Okay, not bad. All right, that's good enough for now. At least we know where that is. Actually, I will go ahead and take off a little bit here. How close to the end of the knife I am with that. Just letting it kind of glide through. Not bad. Now what we need to do, let's bring this up a little bit um, lower. Take off some more around the head here. Forming the neck, as you can see. Let's come down a little bit further even around here. We're just deepening that neck and head separation line. Being very careful to make only the cuts we intend to make. All right. Let's take off some more here. All right. Here's where we are, a little bit crooked, easy fix. Better, not bad. Now let's go ahead and leave the head for a minute. Let's take out just a little bit more along the leg here. As you can see, there's still a little bit of work to do on this front leg. So I'll start here and I'm just going to ever so slightly take off some, even pushing too hard with this thumb is a problem. So. Let's clean this up. Let's do the same thing over here. Now with this, it's tricky because we're working the grain up like this. And so this little move here, we can't just come in and make a cut, at least not very well. So all I'm gonna do is use the very end of the knife and that's because it gives us the least amount of surface area and it allows me to twist the knife like this. If I try that here, I first of all, it's a lot harder, but also I run the risk of breaking off uh, the sharpest part of the blade. So using the tip here makes it much more maneuverable. I'm doing such a little amount at a time. One, because I wanna make sure that I'm not taking off too much, but two, it's actually really hard to do at this angle uh, against the grain. So the smaller moves mean that I don't have to push and struggle, which leads to mistakes. So if you ever find yourself needing to work in a more confined area or a part that's trickier, just keep working at it, but use smaller movements. Like that. So you, even that move is pretty tough and it's almost impossible to do in a controlled manner. So small equals good. All right, that's enough of that. Now, let's go ahead and take off a little bit more of the front part here. I'm just making this because I wanna separate the head a little bit more and I can actually do a cut here. If you make a cut and then cut up to that, you won't take off too much, or at least more than you attend. So I make another cut here, gives the other cut a place to stop against makes it even. All right. And then I can come in and I might do this later as well, but using the tip of the knife, 
scrape out this part. Look at that little fella coming together. Now what I'm gonna do is we have the ears kind of meeting up at a line here, and I'm gonna make a deeper cut between them, a little uneven, so I'm gonna go up a little higher here. Slowly make one of those rocking cuts like we made before, and then I'm gonna cut up to it. Sometimes if you're finding that it's not pushing through as well as you want, you can slide across, especially when you're working against the grain and you don't want to risk coming up here and taking off this whole ear. That sliding motion can be helpful, like that. Just like a saw or something, you know. And that allows us to separate the head a little bit more. Careful, all right, good. Okay, so at this point, it's time to step back and look at the whole picture. So is the dog as wide as you want it to be? Should it be a little bit narrower? It's clear that this should be a little narrower up here on the head. We can adjust the ears later, but keep them separated. And then I'm gonna start to come around the corner here and soften that up just a little bit. All right, now this seems like a good time to move on to the next step, and that is gonna be to take basically every, this is kind of like a flat plane style, um, and what that means is that you're gonna make large cuts that uh, won't end up being terribly refined, but it ends up making kind of a, a unique style on its own. Um, so that's what we're looking towards. But to get there, we need to just make these lines here at basically every point where there's like a corner or an intersection of wood, essentially. And what this allows us to do is just to visualize the cuts that we're going to be making. And these are all going to be kind of stop cuts. All right, so that'll give us an idea to begin. And this is where we really start to refine the carving that we're going to be making. So let's start, for example, right here. And what we'll do is just make a relatively deep cut. Nothing crazy, though and it's kind of at an angle, so we're not going deep in this direction, more just like laying it on there and just pushing, like that. And that's what we're gonna do for all of these. And so then, once we have that done, we can make another slight one here, a little bit less, and another slight one right here. And so that gives us an idea of where we're gonna be cutting. So let's go here. I'm just making a pretty shallow cut here to start with. So there's that. And then coming from this direction, same thing. And so that is a good example of how we're going to be doing this. Clean that up just a bit. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing from here down to here, being very careful. And then I didn't make a mark here, but for example, we'll want one here. And so we're going to have to, in this tight area, just use the very tip, just like so. And you can take these angles as deep or as shallow as you want. It's all depending on the style you want it to be. Personally, this is the way I like it. Let's flip this around and being gentle as can be come up from here, keeping it shallow to start because it's safer that way. There we go. All right, so that kind of gives you an idea of where we're going with this. So we're gonna keep working at all the different angles that you want, basically. And I'm gonna do one here. Again, using the very tip of the knife allows you to kind of turn it like this. But you can start from this one too. It's a little trickier to do. There we are. It's all part of the process, so just take your time.
All right. Now this one, I'm pretty much just gonna take a chunk off right here. And we'll make this a little more even. So that's what we're looking at so far. Let's trim up the tail. All right, we're getting there. All right, so let's keep working around. And then of course, we're gonna have to, have to do the same thing to the other side. You might have noticed that I tend to talk about how gentle I'm being, and that's because, as I've said before, I break these off sometimes when I'm going too quickly. And I think it's important to note that you don't have to push very hard to get good results as long as your knife is sharp. So that's one really, really crucial thing to making these smooth cuts. And and again, if your knife is dull and you're pushing in really hard, it's way too easy to break off big chunks. All right, we're getting there. So this one. Now here's a good example of another technique. So as you're coming in here, you can see that I'm taking off, I'm, if I keep going in this direction, this is all gonna split right down here. So. I don't want to keep doing that. I don't want this whole chunk to split off. So I'm just going to adjust and come back from the other angle instead. First do that. And that way, it only does what I want it to. So sometimes you will have to kind of adjust your technique based on where you are in the piece of wood, whether you're against the grain, with the grain, whatever. And that is all right. All right, now, this one, I'm not gonna do as much because I have a feeling some of this is gonna come off anyway, like this, when we start to get back to the head a little bit more. So I'm gonna switch back to the back leg here. Now what we can do is sort of work on the tail a little bit because we know that tails don't look like this boxy square. Uh, so what we can do is make this just a tad bit deeper here. And same thing on the other side. Careful, not pushing hard at all. And then what I'm gonna do is start at about the middle point here and just come back down into another stop cut. Maybe some right here. Maybe some right here. Give it a more rounded look as a tail would be, but don't get too carried away because the narrower you make the space, the trickier it'll be, and or more, more fragile it'll be, I should say. And you can actually, if you give it some angles like this, it gives it kind of the appearance that it's narrower than it really is. So there's that, that's where we're at so far. And I think I'm gonna take off a little more here. Perfect. Now, I'm gonna do the same thing I did towards the base, except towards the outside. So starting about the middle point, and then I'm gently pivoting Not so worried about taking off more here because this won't be supporting anything. Mm -hmm. 
and then I'm just rounding off the edge. So that's what we get there. And I'm pretty happy with that because this is kind of like a stylized dog. I'm not going to worry about it making it absolutely realistic. And then you can come in to where there's a little bit of a pencil mark still. Just get rid of that. All right. Now, let's do this. Taking out a little more here because I think it needs it. You kind of have to move back and forth like this if you want to make this back a little more suede, which I do. Um, you can't really come in and then just twist up and have it work because as you come in here, as you move up, it'll just splinter this whole thing. So you kind of have to come in at this angle and come in at this one, just like with these stop cuts we've been doing in order to prevent that from happening. All right, that's looking good. Now, there we go. Perfect. All right. Now let's take off a little bit of this point here. Just that easy. And then let's clean this up. Obviously this is, in my opinion, a little too thick. Dogs don't necessarily look like this uh, on the body, I should say. So what we're going to do is start about here and start working our way up. And we're going to start narrowing the neck. You have to be extra slow and careful here because if you slip, you'll take off that ear. So use a combination of methods. You can do the pivoting thing, you can do the sliding thing, whatever allows you the most control. You can also just avoid the ear altogether by coming this direction, although that's a little trickier for me, at least given this angle. But it works pretty well. Clean this up, and you can see what we're working towards here. Let's make this cut here again, let's do that, and then we're pretty much going to finish the neck by just picking a point, and again using my thumb for very controlled movement. There we go, just trying to meet that line there, that look, looks pretty good. All right, and then now, since we're on this side, let's narrow out the muzzle here. This time I'm starting kind of at the halfway point. And we can compare. Looks good. And then I'm gonna make the nose just a little less pointy by taking off a chunk like this. All right. Let's do the same thing for the neck on the other side.
let's call that good for now and we'll do the same thing we did on the other side right now so I'm gonna make those same marks anywhere I want to make those angles and really you now that you kind of know what I'm doing you can really just make these marks wherever you want wherever you want there to be an angle I think I'll try this one now so I'll start here at a obvious place that just gives you a point to work towards and stop. There we are. I'm going to take off a little here because it's still showing a lot of the grain from where I cut it. So I don't necessarily love uh, that this happened, but uh, there is a way to fix that. Uh, all we have to do is make this side just a little bit deeper with the cuts around the arm here. And this time stopping right about here will help. And then I'm just going to take these small little turns here. And so if something like that happens and you're just not a fan of how it turned out, you can pretty much always fix it if you're just slow and careful. Now let's go back here and you'll see how this all comes together. All right, so then let's go ahead and take off just a little bit of the leg here.
that's good enough. So then now let's go ahead, smooth this out just a bit. And then what I want to do is come back in on the haunch, if you will. Maybe make this just a little deeper. You'll notice that I can do that move where I'm just rotating it when I'm moving against the grain like this. Whereas I wouldn't be able to do that if I was moving with the grain. So yeah, you'll, you'll just get a feel for that. All right, looking good. I think I'll fix the foot here. This is a tricky part. All right, that's a little better. Now let's angle this down some more. And at this point, we've done all the major cuts, so all we really need to do is just smooth it out. So that's all I'm doing. And then I'm gonna bring this down, make it a little less pointy on the hips. And really, at this point, you, you just play with it. See what looks good to you, and just do that. So if, if we're really being um, you know, creative with it, I guess you could say that the tutorial part of this is really just the main cuts, and then just make it your own. And part of that is gonna be coming back for me to the head. So here's where we are, and we need to, in my opinion, smooth out this head some more. So I leave this part for the very last because it's all about proportion and just making sure that it looks the way you want. So what I'll do is smooth out this corner here just a little. Like that. Maybe make this a little bit narrower. doing it from the front this time, but it's better to make your cut here first because the, the ears we have here are so thin that it would just be way too easy to slide them right through. So that stop cut ensures that that does not happen. Even if you're being really controlled, it can still splinter off. So make that adjustment, do that. And then to me, these ears are a little bit too wide, I guess you could say. So I'm gonna take some of them off. That's good, looking better. And then up here as well. Part of the reason it's good to have a sharp knife, once again, just takes off, ensures that you're taking off what you want to take off. All right, let's even that out just a little bit more. Now I'm going to make another cut right here at the muzzle, at the point where the kind of skull meets the muzzle, if you will, and do that, and then do that. 
kind of softens it up a bit. Not going too deep with that cut. There we are. And then I'm going to do take this corner off here. All right, and then let me just get rid of some of these grains here that you can clearly see. And then round out the edges here. Now, one of the last things I want to do to this is separate the ears just a little bit because as you can see, it kind of looks like part of the head, just one unit. So I'm going to make a mark here and here and then just ever so slightly just take off a bit in both directions. And that kind of gives them a little bit of a better separation. And let's adjust this. And then, yeah, at this point, it's pretty much just doing whatever shaping you want uh, to make it look the way you want it to look. So I like to take out a little bit more here. I like the pattern from the book, but uh, personal opinion is that the chest is a little bit too pushed out or something, so I'm going to come in here and change that just a bit. But if you like it, you can leave it. So that is a completed dog. And so um, I'm not doing anything like separating the legs because that's gonna be a little bit more of an advanced thing. Um, and also with something this small, you do run the risk of uh, snapping. So there you have it, a little golden retriever you can put on your mantle or by your nightstand or in the bathroom. I don't care where you put it, it's up to you. Um, stay tuned because in the next few videos we're going to be working through some similar projects that are easy for beginners and they're just fun to do on a little afternoon. Uh, if you found this video fun or helpful, please leave me a like. It really helps me out a lot and I'd appreciate it. And until next time, thanks for watching.